Greetings, knowledge seekers. The Force is with you. My name is Prion Joni, and today we're gonna unbox my brand new lightsaber from Imperial Workshop. So real quick, Imperial Workshop is a lightsaber shop that is known to distribute LGT sabers. LGT is one of the handful of companies from China that builds lightsabers. In fact, one of my favorite shops that I buy lightsabers from, Dark Wolf Sabers, which is Johnny Collado, his shops is one of the shops that sell these lightsabers. Well, Imperial Workshop, what they've been doing is I caught them on Carly King's uh, YouTube channel, and they sell these NeoPixel style lightsabers for well under $200. And they tend to sell out quick. Just to put it in perspective, they have this one hilt called the Scavenger 2.0, and it's basically the identical LGT hilt from Dark Wolf Sabers known as Lupin Rose. But they sell it for $160, a full pixel saber for $160, including the blade. It uses the cheaper Xenopixel board, it's not a profi. Just to put this into place, the Xenopixels cost roughly around $130 just for the board. And this is $160 for a hilt, a blade, the full lightsaber package. So on May the 4th, 2022, right at midnight, <laughs> they restocked some of their sabers and I actually had a notification set up for them. They both had the Scavenger and the Revenant. So I sort of did an impulse buy and I bought the Revenant lightsaber. So I'm not affiliated with Imperial Workshop. I bought this one on my own. So let's open this up. I always appreciate a lightsaber store that has their own packaging because sometimes you get a lightsaber from a manufacturer and it's just a generic box with the lightsaber wrapped in only bubble wrap. And it's always a good look for the company when they have their own branding. Whoa, <laughs> so here we got the hilt all wrapped up. And this is the first time I'm getting a semi replica lightsaber. Well, like I said, it's inspired since my Darth Vader one, which was my first lightsaber ever back in 2005. I've been getting the non replica ones, the stunt saber ones that I love from LGT. And I cannot believe this lightsaber with blade electronics, everything is under $300. This was $275 plus shipping and tax. It costs about what a Saturday night out with some friends could be like without the hangover the next day. And the happiness can last you a lifetime. <laughs> oh my goodness. That is nice. It's a nice polish to it. And it's a different kind of button that I've been used to using. It's actually one with a click. So let's talk about the differences between this and the lightsaber Luke had in Return of the Jedi. So for the most part, the overall look of it is the same. It has the triangle ring at the pommel and the grills here are the same. Now, the major thing that you'll notice first is that it doesn't have the rectangle switch with the two LED lights, the red and green. And it's actually seen in a deleted scene up close, those red and green LEDs with the switch over here, which makes this a very attractive saber if you want to have one that you can spin, but also use as a prop. See, those switches can sometimes feel really uncomfortable when you're spinning or if you're dueling and not having it there just makes the lightsaber so much more comfortable to hold. Now I'm wondering if I can actually put the switch here, if I bought one of those switches and I could temporarily put it on here and then take it off when I just want this to be nice, straight and sturdy like that. And this whole thing is not very sharp. Like the edges don't want to cut you like Jade's uh, Saber Forge custom saber. This doesn't feel like it's going to leave marks in my hand. I mean, unless I grip this right here, but it's not going to cut me at all. Now, the other thing is that the emitter cup is actually deeper here. The original, it comes down up to here. And the reason for that is so that the blade can securely fit in there. If it's not that deep, the blade won't be fastened very well and it could come off during spinning or play. 
There's a total of four screws that hold the blade in place. And when you have them all, you know, relatively tight, not, you know, not over tightened, it doesn't move around. Now, the other thing that's a little bit more accurate here is the neck. Now, I don't think this is the same size neck as the one in the film, but it is thinner because the Disney ones are known to be thick, especially the Galaxy's Edge one. Because on the Disney Galaxy's Edge Legacy lightsaber, there are two types of necks that it comes with. There's a more accurate thin neck one, but you can't put the blade in it. And the one where you can put the blade in is a thicker neck. This section of the thin neck lightsabers are often where there's a compromise because either they have to make the emitter deeper or they have to make the neck thicker. And the shiny polished look makes it really, really good for taking to a con or doing any cosplay activity with it where you still want to use the saber for some light stunt work. And check out what else is in the box. Of course, we have our our charger and it it's USB type C. We'll open the bottom. And our charger is actually below the pommel area. Let's go ahead and charge this. This is a USB micro SD card reader because you can actually take the SD card off the Xenopixel and change the sound fonts. Ooh, nice. They have a re okay, so I really appreciate this that they have a full colored manual because sometimes you only have those little, those little business cards for uh, your instructions and those are easy to lose. They're usually in this plastic bag with the Allen key. And here we got the Neopixel blade. I believe this might be a 36. I don't have my other blades down here, but yeah, this is a 36. And I typically don't like to spin a 36, but it didn't give you an option. I usually like doing it between 29 and 32 because as an Asian American, I'm only 5'7". And when I have a long lightsaber, it tends to scrape the ground when I'm spinning it. I think this is a heavy grade blade. It's a little shiny. I'm actually gonna sand this off so I get more diffusion out of it, but let's try this out. All right, let me dim the lights and we'll try this out. Heck yeah. Two. Color change activated. Okay, the color change is similar to how you do a profi, which is hold it down and twist. Color selected. The sound? It has a different tone than the other LGT ones. Even though the speaker is the same, I think this pommel really makes it resonate and sound a little bassier. And that is comfortable. I've never known what the saber would feel like in my hand, but it's really nice and grippy where the ridges are. What I like about the Sabre is that the, the screws actually stay in place and they give you extra ones. And inside where the contact is for the Pixel, when you don't have a blade connected, you still have an LED in there so you can see what colors you are even without the blade inside the emitter. Now the big motivation why I got an Imperial Workshop's lightsaber, which are Xenopixels, even though I own a Profi already, 
is the fact that I saw this Finding the Force video about the Xenopixels. It was showing how the Xenopixels worked. And then I saw a very, very specific blade ignition style. And I've been watching these TikTok videos where people are lining up their lightsabers and then they say $600 lightsaber and then it has the coolest ignition. And I always knew in my head, I'm like, you can't, it, it has nothing to do with the lightsaber being $600. It has everything to do with what board you have in there or what programming you have on your board. Now I've been looking for the past month on how to program a Profi. And for those of you who have attempted it, you know that it's, it's a pretty involved process. It's not an easy thing to do to change your blade style or your fonts. However, because of that Finding the Force video, I learned that Xeno pixels are a lot easier to change the fonts on, and they already sometimes come with the crazy ignition style. So yeah, this is my Revenant lightsaber from Imperial Workshop. It is an inspired lightsaber based on the second Luke, more the second Luke, but without the switch. Anyways, really appreciate you for watching. Thanks, take care. The force is with you always.